Good evening, good evening, good evening out there, Titan Nation. What's going on? Welcome to the first ever, the premiere episode of Titans and Truth. Yes. I am one of your hosts, Chris. And to my right, my tag team partner, the lovely Truth Hurts Herself, <laughs> Tamika. Because the truth does hurt. <laughs> yes, it does. And how are you, how are you doing today? I'm good. I had a long day, but I'm so excited. So I I can't wait to get this party started and to show people what we got, our opinions, what we think, and your comments, your questions. Keep them coming. You guys have been great on his uh, live posts on Facebook. So let's keep it rocking. Let's keep it rolling. And before we get started, I got to put my cell phone blast a little bit because, <laughs> see, I think I got a little bit too excited when I did my live post uh, Sunday that some of you saw. So, Miss um, Truth Hurts wanted to get me for that one. So, yes. I kind of I kind of am owed a beat down. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of y'all probably wouldn't mind seeing that. So, take a number, get in line. Go right ahead. Yes. yes. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. <laughs> yes. But I'm so happy um, to be doing this with you. And you definitely know what you're talking about when it comes to the Titans. I have such a love for the Titans. Um, I'm such a fan. And so I just really wanted to be a part. So I think we should get this party started and let people see what we got. All right. Let's definitely get this party started. <laughs> let's definitely get this party started. Now, I will say um, for our guys in two-tone blue, it was not a nice party back on Sunday, as I told some of you. But let's go in further detail. Most of you already know what happened. We took a 34-26 loss to the Colts, and it was uh, it was really a tale of two halves, to be perfectly honest on that. Um, offensively, the running game was very good. DeMarco Murray had one heck of a game with 25 carries, 107 yards. He had a touchdown and was just very impressive running the ball with the holes that were there. Also, you know, but I do have to go on the bad side. Marcus Mariota had a nice first drive. Um, he ended up going, uh, completing 22 of 37 passes uh, of 232 yards, two touchdowns. Now, he didn't throw any interceptions, which is good. Only bad thing is he had a bad fumble in the fourth quarter, which eventually kind of ended the all hopes of winning the game on Sunday, which we'll get to more on that in just a minute. Uh, some other stats on that. Um Andrew Luck was just like that evil leprechaun. <laughs> I'm pretty sure some of you have seen leprechaun yes, before. Yes, I have. <laughs> the Colts are like that. We've lost 10 in a row to them. They're like that evil leprechaun. Yes, We're going for that pot of gold, and they just find a way to take it from us. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, that was what I was scared of because anytime you see somebody wearing number 12, and unfortunately he's wearing blue and white, I know. <laughs> it's bittersweet, ain't it? With the name it's Luck on the back, <laughs> it was bad luck for it the was. Titans on Sunday. So, to get into that, offensively again, you know, Marcus had his ups and downs. He more he struggled more than he produced, but the first drive was really good uh, to start off the game. He was 5-5 five five on the first drive, and he found Taylor Lawan for a touchdown. That's right, people. That is not a typo. That is not a missed word. Taylor Lewan, our big boned left tackle, got into the end zone for his first ever career touchdown. It was a beautiful setup play. Basically, it was like a tight end screen because they had a unbalanced line. They had, um, of course, you know, if anybody knows football, you had unbalanced. You have a center, you had a guard, you had a tackle, you had another tackle. And then you only had a guard and a tackle on the other side. So it was more it was unbalanced to the right side. Marcus fooled it all, got it to the left, into the end zone. So Taylor Wong got to celebrate big time. That was a beautiful setup. After that, things kind of went downhill from there. 
Uh, the next couple of drives really stalled. Marcus seemed to really miss uh, a lot of his receivers. Either they were, you know, too high or he hesitated or he even threw off his back foot, which he even said uh, in uh, the Tennessean and uh, to a couple of sources that he kind of got lazy at times and was throwing off of his back foot. And you can't be lazy when you're trying to throw a ball. When you're trying to throw a ball and you're trying to get into a tight area, you got to kind of have your body evenly out. You can't really throw it off your back foot. You want to throw it off your front foot because you have more power there. He just seemed to be off uh, quite a bit. And, and also, he had a really nice deep ball, but it was just a little bit overthrown. And I think if he had thrown it to where uh, Rashard Matthews had almost caught it, if he threw it out a little bit in front of him, I have no doubt. That's about a 60-yard touchdown right there that we kind of missed out on. And, of course, everybody remembers the whole ball in the back of the head of DeMarco Murray. He didn't get to turn around for that. So it was kind of a rough start for Mariota after the first drive, but he got it together in the uh, in the drive before halftime, and we ended up being down 17-13. to 13. I'll explain why we were down there in a second, but uh, got, a, uh, got the touchdown, got... Of uh, the last one with DeMarco Murray running it in, and we ended up down 17 13. The second half, you know, um, Marcus looked a little bit better. The run game was there, and Delaney Walker really got involved later. Mm -hmm. um, he didn't really get involved much in the first half, but the second half, they really went to him, and he ended up having a nice game to a tune of seven catches, 84 yards. And he also had a touchdown. He actually had uh, the game tying touchdown uh, early in the fourth quarter when we were down twenty to thirteen. We made it twenty to twenty, and of course, then we got a three and out, added a field goal by um, by Mister Suckup, <laughs> which yes, I know that's a very funny name, Suckup, <laughs> Suckup. Which he actually made, if I'm not mistaken, he's made 25 field goals straight inside yeah. of 50 yards. So he's money inside 50. It's when we get beyond 50, we have right. a problem. Yes. <laughs> but um, but he was very um, but very good with that. And then of course we all know what happened on the last drive when we had a chance to drive and win the game um, down 27-23. You know, had the fumble happen. And on that particular, let me discuss that particular play. At first, I was really, really mad at Marcus. I was really living at Marcus for most of the day and on that particular play. However, that one, a little bit, I would say 10% of that was on him. 90% of that was on Brian Schwinky, uh, not blocking his guy completely well. And of course, Coach Malarkey would say, that center Ben Jones should have helped him out with the block a little bit more. Maybe Ben Jones was a little late helping him out, but as an offensive lineman, your job is to hold up your blocks. Right. Hold up your blocks, whether it's a double or single block. And, you know, no defensive lineman should be able to beat a double team. That just should not happen. And But uh, McGill, the defensive tackle for Indy, he got through and was able to strip Mariota and, Old man wonder, Mr. Robert Mathis took it in for uh, Indianapolis. And then had the nerve, he throws up the Omega Psi <laughs> Phi sign. So I'm guessing he's a member of that fraternity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had to throw it up. So for any Omegas out there, I, I give y'all that one. I guess he, he got you one. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was it was kind of a rough day for Marcus on that and um, everything. And just seemed like he was off a lot. But I... As much as I hate to admit it, I got to give credit to the Indianapolis defense because we really should have taken advantage of them. They're one of the worst defenses in the league, but yet, but yet they were able to contain. They got three sacks on Marcus. I think a couple of them were. I hate, I hate to keep bashing on Marcus a little bit. I love Marcus to death. I want y'all to know that. But I think most of his sacks that he suffered this year and even in this game were self inflicted. A couple of times, he didn't get the ball out when he should have. He held the ball too long. Other times, he was trying to escape the pocket and try to get out and create some room. Maybe he did it a little bit too late. Mm -hmm. And so, 
you know, an offensive lineman can only hold that block for so long. And when you try to escape and you escape and not getting out of there fast enough and it's closing in, that defensive lineman can get to you a little bit faster. So that was a, a bit of a move point on that. But I know Marcus will get better with that, which is something we'll definitely go into a little bit. On the defensive side, our good defense, let's just say, got exposed Sunday. Got exposed. Andrew Luck goes to the tune of 353 yards, three touchdowns, no interceptions. And unfortunately, Mr. T.Y. Hilton, he burned us many times. And uh, in one play in particular, a nice 37-yard touchdown bomb that unfortunately Jason McCourty could not keep up with him. I knew he was fast, but... That guy can play. So, yeah, T.Y. kind of burned us pretty good the whole day. And it just seemed, as um, as some of the uh, broadcasters on some of the radio shows I've listened to have said, it just seemed like T.Y. was open every time he caught the ball. Nobody was close. Um, I don't know if that is more so on the coverage or if that was more so T.Y. getting open. But um, I really think that... Um, I really think that, um, sorry about that distraction right there. I really just think that T.Y. is a very good receiver, but we should have been able to control uh, what was happening there a little bit further. But, yeah, he had seven catches, 133 yards. He had a touchdown. He was great. Luck was Andrew Luck. luck. <laughs> he gave us bad luck once again, and he's definitely one of the better young quarterbacks uh, in this league. And, He's going to be in a thorn in our side for many years to come. He's still got a lot of years left uh, to do that. Um, but what hurt, but basically what hurt was we were up 6 nothing. Uh, we were up 6 nothing because we had a botched extra point. And the Colts were driving, but we got them to third down, and that was one of the keys. We got them to third down. That's where they tend to struggle. They were only 4 of 10 on third down. But... In this particular drive, Bryce McCain ended up causing a pass interference call. I think it was a questionable call, but of course we know these refs, the particular crew that was there, they don't take no crap. They will call anything. And unfortunately, he was uh, the victim of a pass interference call, led to a touchdown. If that doesn't happen, defense gets off the field. At worst, they give up a field goal. So instead of it being um, seven to three, instead of it being seven to six, it's probably six to three Titans. Um, so there were a lot of points that were uh, left out on the field um, by uh, by both sides of the ball. We only got to Andrew Luck a couple of times, which I would have would have liked us to get to them more because their offensive line is just horrible. But they didn't look like that Sunday. Um, even though there were, there was a, um, an article on Music City Miracles, there were a couple of photos where it looked like the Colts got away with a lot of holds, uh, a lot of holding calls that really could have been called, uh, but either way, you're supposed to fight through that anyway. Anybody will tell you, holding happens on just about every play. It's just when you get caught, and they did not get caught on that. So uh, we only got two sacks. And also, Jack Doyle burned us. Former Titan, uh, hated we couldn't keep him, but I know we had that we had roster cuts to deal with. He ended up torturing us too for nine catches, seventy eight yards. It seemed like Avery Williamson and Wesley Woodyard, our linebackers, and even and especially Sean Spence, had a difficult time covering tight ends. But that's been a problem all year. Tight ends have had their some of their best games against us have gotten some good catches. And that has to be something that has to be addressed. I don't know if it's going to be in the draft. We may need to look at getting a faster inside linebacker, somebody better that can cover. I think Avery Williamson is a really good, uh, very good inside linebacker. Could be better in coverage, but very good against the run. Um, Wesley Woodyard has, been, has shown exceptional leadership capability, but at the same time, he might be getting up there uh, in age, so I don't know how long he's going to be on the team after this season. But we really got to get better at covering tight ends, and that's just 
Um, that's just something that we're going to have to deal with. And we're going to have to get better in the secondary. We're going to have to cover better. Um, Paris Cox left the game. Uh, our, one of our corners left the game uh, with concussion symptoms uh, from that and had to be carted off. And his status looks like he's not going to be able to play tomorrow night um, against Jacksonville. And, of course, I forgot to mention on the offensive side, Quinn Spain, our left guard, he went down as why Schwinky was in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's going to be out about three to four weeks with a knee sprain. So, obviously, he's not going to play. That's kind of a blow to our offensive line. So, Schwinky better step up. Or I think uh, or I think uh, our rookie, Sebastian Tritola, might come up and replace him. So, I'm hoping that happens for uh, San Diego. But it was just a tough day. Luck was getting the ball off in less than three seconds. And... Most of the time, if he's going off that fast, it's very difficult to stop him. And last but not least, it seems like this is going to be an, old, an adage that we're going to be talking about all year. Special teams, once again, finds a way to screw up. Finds a way to cost us points. We already had the botch kick that cost us a point. Then... An onside kick comes out by surprise, and I have to admit it was perfectly executed by Indianapolis. We were caught napping. I don't care what Coach Malarkey says as far as saying that they were ready for it. Obviously, you were not. Because if you were ready for it, you would have already had recovered it, or you would have had the right people in place for it. But since they were not, they the Colts get on the ball. They're they're up 14 to 6. Now they're up 17 to 6. So that's another three points we lost there. So that was what I said, eight points. And then add the fumble from Marcus, 15 points. Take those away from Indy, what happens? We lose the game. <laughs> Titans win. Titans would have won well, if it we weren't for those won. 15. Yeah, that's why we lost. If it won for those 15. So yeah. thank you, Philip Super Slaw. Yes, I said that. Philip Super <laughs> Slaw, not Super Naw. I know that's his real name, Super <laughs> Slaw, for screwing that up. Yes. Indeed. So, that was just really messed up. I was mad about it, but I'm going to try to cry. I'm going to just get over it. <laughs> yeah. if, y'all saw on sun- if y'all saw on Sunday how I was, I didn't want to speak to nobody. <laughs> Not even me. <laughs> And she's my tag team partner. <laughs> Not even me. He was upset. I was mad, but he was livid. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, I feel like, you know, we lost. But I feel like there was definitely a star of the game. For me, the star of the game was DeMarco Murray. And to me, he's just one of those people that you just have to watch out for. He... Oh, my God, he dominates. Anytime he, we play against anyone, he's just that person, that go-to person. Um, he he dominated that game. Whether we lost, he he's just one of those people. He's really my top five in the NFL to watch out for because he, you know, he's just, to me, the star of the game. I, and you know what? I definitely agree with that, and let me tell you why. DeMarco is right now third in the league in rushing. Mm -hmm. Uh, He's third in the league in rushing. I know Ezekiel Elliott from Dallas is ahead, but I honestly think he could catch him. He's averaging, he averaged in this game 4.2 yards a carry. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite radio broadcasters, Mr. Jared Stillman, I give a shout out to you. He said it himself, stick with the running game. Why? You get three chances to make a first down. How many yards? Ten. Four times three is 12. First down if you run it three times. It's there. And so I definitely agree. I think DeMarco Murray uh, definitely was the big factor in the game. He's a beast. (laughs) This dude is worth every bit of the money that he is getting paid. John Robinson, bravo, sir. (laughs) Because I just think you straight up robbed the Eagles (laughs) with him. Anybody knows this is going to come back to be the trade of the franchise. So, yes. Uh, So, for our first ever Two-Tone Blue Star of the Week, it is to you, Mr. DeMarco Murray. Yes. Star of the Week. Now, 
where there's a star of the week, there's a dunce of the week. Now, uh, there now, he is. Let's see if you agree with me. The entire Tennessee Titan kickoff team is my dunce of the week. Hands down. Hands down. Hands down. Let me tell you something. Anybody that disagrees <laughs> with that has a serious Hands problem. <laughs> There is no way anybody else deserves that. I know Marcus had a tough game. The defense had a tough game. But, yes, dunce of the day, dunce of the week, pretty much has been the dunce of the year so far, has been the Titans special teams. You get caught napping on an onside kick. The Colts were coming in. They're coming in two and four. They're desperate. They needed any kind of spark to win. They knew if they lost this game that it was pretty much over. Mm -hmm. It was pretty much over. Pagano probably gets fired at the end of the year, if not before. You got a chance to knock them out of playoff contention. They'll be 0-3 in the division if they had lost this game. And that moment right there told me we're in some trouble. And it cost us some points there because of that. But that's been a problem all year. I mean, it seems like that is the fourth straight game, I want to say, where special teams ended up being a factor in us winning or losing a game. More so losing. Uh, but that's four straight. You know, the punt return against Houston, the punt return against Miami, the not recovering the onside kick against Cleveland, and now this. With the Colts. So, I mean, that, it was just, they were not in the right place. I don't care what Malarkey says, they were not ready for that. They were not ready. Special teams, kickoff return, really all the special teams, dunce of the day, mark it down. <laughs> yes. So now, we're going to get to my favorite portion of the show. We're actually oh, really? going to pick your brain. So oh, these pick are, my brain. Pick your brain. So these are questions from some of the fans and from, you know, people that I've asked about the Titans, um, you know, about this week's game, about next week's, about, I'm sorry, tomorrow's game against Jacksonville. Right. So we're going to ask just a couple of questions, and I just want to see how you feel about it. Use me. <laughs> Use me. <laughs> so our first question is, do you think if – Mariotti didn't fumble in the last game that we would have won. <laughs> you said Mariotti. Oops. Oh, oh. Uh, we're sorry. It's Mariota. Mariota. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. She's catching on, y'all. Oh, my God. Everything's going to be all right. I, but I've always called him Mariotta. Mariotti. Because I don't <laughs> like him. <laughs> He's not, I don't it, like it's him. It's perfectly okay. I don't like him. I don't want to do that. Okay. No, okay. he, he's a great I Hawaiian. Mean, he's he's okay. a great Hawaiian he island right. quarterback. He all right. Oh. <laughs> she knows okay, what, so she the knows quarterback. I know, I know he's a quarterback. <laughs> I do know that. All right. Yes. <laughs> but uh, to, answer your que to answer your question, and I know exactly who that came from. Yes. Miss Lorita, I give you a shout out. I know you're one of the biggest Titan fans in this world. <laughs> Thank you for this question. Now, to answer that question, I would say yes. I think, honestly enough, if he hadn't fumbled on that last drive, I think Marcus drives us down, and at worst, well, we need a touchdown to win the game. I honestly think Marcus would have took us down. We end up winning the game 30-27 to had that fumble not happened. But... It's been a couple of instances, and that's been kind of the story with Marcus. If you don't turn over the ball, Titans usually win. I mean, every game this year has come down to the fourth quarter. We've been in it. We have not been blown out. We have been right there in the thick of it. Every game we've had has been a one-possession game, less than 10 points. So you got to cut out the turnovers. If Marcus doesn't fumble here, or if he doesn't throw the picks, <coughs> excuse me for that. <clears throat> Forgive me, this is a bad cough I got. But uh, if he doesn't throw the pick against uh, Minnesota or fumble on the exchange, 
You know, those are points lost. Um, so you really, he really has to just take care of the ball better, secure the ball. That has been an issue of his, but I know Marcus is a hard worker. And we do have to also know he's in his second year. And I know everybody say he should be better than that right now. But I think he's going through a sophomore slump. I think that exists. And, I mean, we got to give it. This was his 19th game, his 19th game as a pro, which tomorrow night will make 20. Uh, that will be a pro. So, I agree. If it wasn't for those particular turnovers, yes, those are wins we could have had. Okay. Well, what about the interception against Minnesota and then the Colts? Do you think we could have took that home? Let me go back to that play against Minnesota. Let's say exactly what happened because for those of you that don't know, and I'm pretty sure you do, it was a screen pass. Screen pass will be out to Harry Douglas, which I don't know why it was going to him. And I think Marcus released it a little bit too fast. And Harry Douglas didn't block his guy uh, and got out for the screen. So that was kind of a busted play in and of itself. And I know that's one that he wished he could have had back. Now, another instance, uh, we're going to get to that fumble in just a bit. Another instance was in the game against the Raiders. He threw an interception. He threw it behind his receiver, and even though the receiver tried to fight for it a little bit, it got taken away. Again, a throw that Marcus shouldn't have made. Cleveland is another example. Um, was running out of the pocket, kind of threw it off of his back foot. He probably should have just either threw it away or ran out of bounds, saved yourself a turnover, and it doesn't cost you points. So, and that in, in the fumble, he should have just held the ball a little bit more. And if you get sacked, you get sacked. But you don't ever drop the football. And it could have been just second down, live to fight another down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the turnovers are an issue. And I think he's he's worked better. He hasn't fumbled as much, but he's throwing turnovers at the worst times, which has cost us quite a few ball games, which... Really could have been the difference between either five and two, six and one uh, of a record. So we could have had a much better record. We've lost a few games because of that. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, so what else do we have? Well, let's see. Do you think that the Titans have been too much on Marco Murray? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yeah. That's Demarco. Demarco's your money. Demarco's the bread and butter. If anything. I know he got ran to the core in Dallas. I know, 400 carries, he got ran all the way down. And I know that Coach Malarkey doesn't want to burn him as much as that. And for some of y'all out there, I know y'all have been screaming, why not Derrick Henry be in the game more? How come Derrick Henry's not in the game more? Let me once and for all put this issue to rest. Derrick Henry is going to be a great back for this team. He's going to get his opportunities. But right now, DeMarco, Mur DeMarco Murray is money right now. He has ran for 100 yards. He has given 100 yards a game three of the last five games. When was the last time any Titan player had 100 yards before DeMarco Murray? Don't worry, I'll wait. The answer will be back in 2013 with CJ. Last time somebody had 100 yards. Mm -hmm. That's been three years ago. So if it's me, I'm going to ride DeMarco Murray as much as he possibly can go. And if he just gets to the point where he needs to come out for a bit, then I bring in DeMar Derrick Henry and get him into a flow. Because believe me when I tell you, defenses are not going to want to deal with that. DeMarco Murray comes in and gashes him. Then he comes out, the defense is going to be like, oh, thank goodness, he's leaving the game. <laughs> then they see Derrick Henry, they'll be like, oh, no, this fool coming in. <laughs> so, no, I don't think they're leaning too much on DeMarco. I think that helps Marcus out a lot more. I think, I think lesser passes for Marcus might be better for him. Yeah. That might be better. And it gets him into a flow that helps keep him clean, right. keep him healthy, so he can make it through 16 games. So, Absolutely not. I'll, I'll ride the money train while it's going. 
Okay. Well, this is a very good question okay. that we have here. Tell, um, tell me about so it. So, what do you think the defense and the offense needs to do to pull through for tomorrow's game versus Jacksonville? All right. This is basically <laughs> this is basically yeah, I'll I'll try to make this as quick as I can. It's gonna be hard to do. <laughs> My keys to the game. On defense, get after Blake Bortles. Get after him. He's struggling. Sack him as much as possible. Now, this team is not very good. Not very good. This team can be defeated. I mean, they lost to the Oakland Raiders, so we got to get after Blake Bortles. Now, we're going to have a problem containing the Allen twins, Allen Robinson and Allen Hearns. Both of them are great, very good receivers, so... Whoever starts on the other side of Jason McCourty, I pray to God is not Antoine Blake. But defense has to step up, got to stop tight end, get pressure on the quarterback. Offensively, like I said before, ride DeMarco Murray. Ride him. I think he's going to have a big day. I think he'll have another 25 carries, 120 yards. And I think he gets in for two scores. So you got to ride with the offensive line, got to ride with the running game, make it a little bit easier for Marcus. Agree. I agree with that. So, who do you think is going to have to step up in tomorrow's game? Um, you know, we've had a few injuries. Mm-hmm. Um, who do you think is going to have to just step up and and get this win for us? Number one, I think Kendall Rice got to reappear. I mean, he had one great game against Cleveland, right? And for some reason, they didn't go to him. Him and Tajay Sharp. Until this last game, I raved about Tajay coming out of the preseason. He has one great game against Minnesota, mm-hmm. and he's just disappeared. He's got to reemerge. He's got to come back in. And so, Kendall Wright and Tajay Sharp have to reemerge. And defensively, whoever steps up, I mean, I think Kevin Byers going to have to start for Rashard Johnson, mm-hmm. and probably Bryce McCain's probably going to go for – um, in replacement of Parrish Cox. Just don't give up the big play. Do not give up the big play. Play sound. You should beat this team. That's my keys. Okay. And no special team screw-ups. <laughs> okay. You're right about that. Because that, we can't afford to have that. <laughs> no, we can't. No, okay. we can't. Okay. I, I like it. All right. Well, now it's time for me, my moments, Mika's moments. Mika's moments. Mika's moments. So if you all were here in Nashville, a lot of you know that we had the breast cancer walk yes, down did. at Nissan Stadium. And there were thousands of people dressed in pink and it was for awareness. It was a run slash walk and it mm-hmm. was about 3.5 miles Um, through downtown Nashville. And it was incredible. It was incredible Mm -hmm. to see all the people out there with the kids, with the dogs, in strollers, you know, pushing, you know, young, old. You know, there was music out there. Um, There were, um, Chevrolet was out there, Kroger, you know, these big companies, you know, giving away free stuff, T-shirts, things like that. And it was such a great turnout for breast cancer. Um, This month is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But keep in mind that breast cancer is something that affects so many women and also men. Yeah. Also men. Yes, I was surprised to find out about that. Yes, definitely. Um, My mom passed away last year from breast cancer. It's such an ugly disease. And, um, you know, so remember to... Get those mammograms. Get your checkup. Go to the doctor annually, you know. Yes. And, you know, you can fight it. You know, once it's too late, it's too late. Yeah, so, it's... You, you have to keep up with that. Um, But it was just so wonderful seeing so many people down there at Nissan Stadium in pink and walking for a cure um, and for awareness, you know. And I, I I give it to the NFL for stepping in. It seems like these past couple of years, the NFL has really done a great job in showing awareness, whether it's mm-hmm. wearing pink jerseys or pink socks or pink gloves or pink shoes. You know, they really stepped up and gave 
um, you know, and, and have let people become more aware of breast cancer and how it affects everyone, not just women, you mm-hmm. know. Like I said, men also get breast cancer. So yeah. still, Absolutely. you know, they've done such a great job. And so they have an initiative um, called um, A Crucial Catch. Mm-hmm. That's their initiative. And since 2009, they've raised over $15 million yes. for the cure yes. of breast cancer. Yes. Breast cancer! <laughs> they've raised all this money. And I just want to commemorate them. I think it's a wonderful thing it's a great thing um you know and uh, it's not too late to still donate Absolutely. you can go to www.nfl.com uh, um and or actually www.nfl.com slash pink mm-hmm. and you can still donate to their initiative um if you know anyone who's a team captain like i was a team captain this year um they're still taking donations until december it doesn't yes. end in October. They're still taking donations until December. Absolutely. So I'm going to be, you know, I, my goal was $1,000, and I'm still working towards that, and I'm so glad they gave us extra time to get that money in. You know, I'm still working on getting those donations because I, I want to seriously find a cure for such an ugly, ugly, ugly disease. And again, thank you, NFL. Thank you, Titans, for bringing, you know, even more awareness and for raising all of this money for such a great cause. Absolutely. And I I want to commend you definitely on that. I will, I will donate to that cause as well yes. uh, with that. Thank and you. And they're going to continue doing that all month. They're wearing like pink towels, pink socks. Yes. And this is not uh, Titans related, but I have to give a shout out to the Philadelphia Eagles. I liked what they did on their field. I was watching the game, uh, watching them play Minnesota. They had not only their end zone, they had – their um, eagle name um, outlined in pink. They also had the eagle logo mm. outlined in pink all over the field. And I know a lot of teams, they all have some kind of pink on the field. That is a beautiful cause. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, it is a major, major um, race that we're uh, trying to win. And uh, finding a cure uh, for breast cancer, There's got there's going to be a way to end it. And it takes all of us uh, to do that. So I commend you on a job well done. And the Thank fight you. still goes. Yes, it does. So, yes. Um, but last but not least, before we get out of here and wrap everything up, I'm going to give a quick prediction on tomorrow's game because I'm going to be there, section 123. <laughs> so I'm going to be there cheering on the Titans hard. I'm predicting a 21-13 win. I'm predicting a win. We get to four and four. And once we get there, we can start right back over. We have a few games, we have a few favorable games uh that could go into our um can go in for. So this is a must win game. We gotta come out with a victory. Definitely. And so Titans, get it done. Get it done. It's time for another victory. I'm, I'm ready to go two and oh in my live. Visit to Nissan Stadium. I broke my streak two weeks ago. I'm ready for a second straight live win. Yes. But um, I think that's about time for us to wrap up the show. Yes. And uh, maybe we should give the people some information if they want to look for us, since we're gonna be you're gonna be seeing a lot of us. Yes. Um, um, you can definitely find me at uh, Truth Hurts. Um, on Facebook, um, I'm also on Instagram at New Age Mika. That's New Age Mika on Instagram. I'm gonna definitely um, have a, another Facebook page coming for you soon that you can definitely hit me up, ask questions, ask me questions, ask yes. me almost anything. Either appro- of us <laughs> appropriate. Uh, you know, just keep the questions coming, um, uh, and we will definitely try to answer your questions by the next show. So we plan on mm-hmm. doing this weekly, bi-weekly. So it's um it's definitely going to be great and I we we would love to hear your comments, your concerns, your even your critiques about what you think Absolutely. we should do. Absolutely. That helps us. <laughs> that helps us to create an even better show yes. for you, mm-hmm. Titans Nation. And of course, if you don't know, if you don't know where to find me, of course you know Chris A. Newell on Facebook, Instagram, 
Blue Enforcer 1914. That's Blue underscore Enforcer E N number four C E R 1914 on Instagram. Uh, you know my blogs on MusicCityMiracles.com. Under fan posts, look for the name Blue Enforcer. You see it under the real deal. That's me. So that is what it is. So, but thank everybody uh, for anybody that views this. Thank you for your questions. I look forward to more. Join the Titans Empire. Get yes. with it. And um, hopefully we'll be coming back to you next week on a victory version of Titans and Truth. Yes. Good night, everybody. Good night. I'll holler at you. Tighten up. <laughs> <laughs>